All right, guys. So we're gonna we change up the set a little bit today because uh, we 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 want to feel closer to you guys. Yeah. We're right here, right yeah, here. We can we can almost touch you. It's an experiment, and uh, hopefully you guys respond well to it. And plus, this makes me closer to Cat, so I like it. Hey guys, I'm Ryan Wright. And I'm Jerry. And I'm Kat. Welcome to Reasons to See. Where we give you reasons to see. And not to see. 300! The Rise of an Empire! So you and I are going to hang out tonight! Okay guys, so uh, today we're gonna spoil it up for you guys because I wanna make sure that uh, we give you guys something different. So if you guys haven't seen 300 Rise of an Empire, we're gonna spoil some stuff possibly. If you don't care about spoilers, then stick around, enjoy the show. But yeah, so 300 Rise of an Empire. Uh, this film is pretty sweet. Not like sweet, it's like it's cute or something. I thought it was a lot of fun. You know, like the whole time, it's just people slashing each other up from like beginning to end. I thought it was more violent than the first one. It was banana sandwich crazy man non-stop gore throughout I guess so I mean there's 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 a lot more talking in this movie too though I don't know I like any movie with a good fight scene you can't really make a movie too violent for me maybe when it's like pointless what I find really interesting is when 300 yeah. came out 300 was just like oh my god look look at this what the hell a lot of movies have pretty much copied 300 yeah and we're well, yeah 300 really paved the way for a whole movement in like television because we get all these historical shows now like even like the the Bible show on Ex the yeah. history channel was like 300 out as well. It looked like Zack Snyder's The Bible. And it's it's weird because this movie kind of reminds me of those shows that this movie, that the first movie inspired. Yeah, they've almost created a genre. It's like a weird loop yeah. in a way. Yeah, and it looks cool. Like, this film still does look really cool. There's just a few scenes that I always walk away thinking about. Like, uh, Eva Green is awesome, yeah, right? She's yeah, she's amazing. Yeah, she is incredible. And there's just a couple of moments where I'm like, this scene really defines Eva Green pretty well. At one point, she slices a guy's <laughs> throat, then slices the back of his neck, then pulls off his head, and starts making out with the decapitated head. I know, I remember just being like, what am I watching? Yeah, right. I don't get it. It's business. Yeah, I didn't understand why she did it, but I was like, this kind of makes sense for her character. The infamous sex scene that everyone is talking about. More like a sex battle. It's like a, yeah. it's like a fight scene, but instead of picking a specific martial art, they chose sex instead. I would love to have sex like that one day. That just looks like a ton of fun. Okay. Wouldn't you agree, Kat, that that looks like a lot of fun? Come on, Kat. Agree with one sex thing on... Ugh. Whatever. It's alright, right. I'll have sex with you that way, Ryan. Thank you, Jerry. You're See? welcome. Gosh, okay, I should just leave you guys alone for a little bit. Come back. But yeah, no, this film was pretty. This film was pretty cool in that arena. Like the sex scene was. Uh, I could. Uh, I could. It was really I, good. I, I could I break thought. it down for you. Yeah. Well choreographed. It was a well choreographed um, sex scene. Like they punched each other. Do a play he throws her play. down. And in the first 300, I felt like there was a really kind of iconic sex scene. So they sort of made it a tradition. I think. Yeah. And kept it going with this movie. Well, the sex scene in the first 300 was just like. Yeah, it was very... Yeah, it's just images. And this one, well, the, it's like the camera just lets it play out. The first movie's sex more. scene is like a 300 sex scene. The second movie's sex scene is like a 300 fight scene. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sometimes the tone was a little bit like on and off. Like it would go like, okay, now we're in 300 style. Now we're in a more realistic world. But overall though, I, I still thought it was a lot of fun regardless. Like the whole reason you're going to check this movie out is mainly because of the visuals and action. And it mm -hmm. totally delivers on all of that. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's still act hacked. It's still a lot of fun. It takes itself more seriously than the first one. Yeah, you know, there, there aren't as many guys on the battlefield who are clearly enjoying the shit out of this. That's yeah. true. Um, so you do miss a little bit of that, but you know, I, I like the guy who was the the leads, uh, the lead Athenian uh, Themistocles. Uh, and, yeah. And Ava Green is awesome. Yeah, she's a really movie. strong character. The Athenians are not as ripped as the Spartans. True. But it makes sense that they're, I mean, sometimes it's like, why is this guy who's just a regular worker so cut? But what I thought was cool about the film was like, these are just men they're yeah. dealing with. You know, 300 those were like warriors at birth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's and, like the only thing they ever do is be warriors. Yeah, and this one they had a lot of, most of them were just like regular people who were fighters and stuff. And you know, I don't know the histor historical story, but I, I it, it does make me want to learn about it. You know, Greek history and stuff like that is always interesting, it seems like. Oh, yeah. And, and another thing I thought was cool about this was that they made all the battles like Navy bat naval battles, like Battle at Sea. So that was like a neat contrast from the original movie, especially because there were a lot of different ways in which, you know, 
know, the Greek military fought. Well, know? and I love the timetable of the storytelling. It wasn't really a prequel or a sequel. It was kind of like, meanwhile, this is what's happening over here. Yeah, yeah. It's like prequel, spin-off, sequel. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yeah. got all those elements going on. And uh, I love the finale of this film. Like, I thought it was great. I totally had chills by the time oh, it ended. Yeah. I didn't want Eva Green to die. I, I thought it would have been cool if somehow they worked things out. <laughs> like, you knew she was going to die, but you were still sad when she did. Yeah. She oh, fought bravely. I thought the role of good guy and villain was more uh, established and it was better It was better than the first one because Xerxes comes in very late into the in the first 300. In my personal opinion, he's kind of a joke and uh, he's just a drag queen in my opinion. And I guess that's the idea in a way. Yeah. Well, he's yeah. larger than life, you know, like he believes he is a god and, and the whole point is to build him up and then you finally see him and you're like, oh, yeah. interesting. And he's a very you're opposite. Feet tall. Like, yeah. What was, what was the opposite of the, you know, Spart Spartans and what they stand for. I felt like, you know, they're not vain at all. And here's this like vainglorious made up guy that's all image and no fight. And that's how you would have retold that story as, as a warrior anyhow. Like, yeah. you know, he was nine feet tall yeah. and covered in yeah. gold. So you know, true, like, yeah. You know. Okay, the first like 20 minutes of this, it seems like it's going to be a Xerxes origin tale because they're, they're so focused on like who Xerxes was before. He was just a guy yeah. with hair and facial hair and his daddy didn't really love him too much. As the film goes, it's like, oh, Xerxes takes a dip in the pool and then he comes out and he looks like the drag queen that he is. And then they kind of just go, but Eva Green's the villain now. From what I have been told, that was actually a rewrite decision because originally it was supposed to be like, this is the Xerxes story. And it, I guess based on a Frank Miller novel that isn't out yet. It was supposed to be very focused on Xerxes and then for whatever reason they chose to not do that. But Eva Green, again, is like... I prefer watching her, yeah. Yeah, I mean, she's so good in this, it's not even funny. No, it's kind of funny. Take that back, Jerry. In the uh, the ending, uh, I like the cliffhanger they had. The cliffhanger I thought was cool. When the Spartans show up, and then Lena Headey is like, fucking just slashing up people, and you're like, I didn't know this chick could kick so much ass! She's in the battlefield. I love Lena Headey. I knew she had it in her. She's, yeah. she's awesome in Game of Thrones, too. She's just one of my favorite actresses. She's great. Yeah, I have to watch Game She's of really Thrones. badass. I think she definitely brought it for this one, just like like she did in the first one. And she probably has a great ass. Oh yeah, I'm sure she does. Bad ass, great ass, you know, bad great ass. When it ended, I did have like a lot of chills because I was like, they're finally united! The Spartans and Athenians! Because that's been the whole problem this entire time. My only thing is I hate cliffhanger endings because I have to wait so long for the next film to come out. I'm just like, come on, come on, I don't what's know what gonna the happen? Next film would be though. There has to be like, another they, film. They can't just end it there. I didn't even read it as like a cliffhanger so much as like, well, they're finally united and they're gonna fight some more. And they're gonna win. <laughs> But I have to, I have to see that happen. Well, that's the know? other thing is I don't know the actual history of all this, so I don't know if it's a foregone conclusion that they win or if they're all going to unite, fight valiantly, and this battle is not going to turn out great. And see, the only way to find out is to watch the next movie. I'm sure you know. I want to see Xerxes get taken down. I want, I want to see how he dies. And yeah, stuff. you're right. Xerxes is still around. Gone so king. Kill him yes, Neil. He's not yeah. really good. Yeah. What is Big doing? Leonidas, <laughs> you've come back to die with your city. I just thought there were just some great fight scenes that were really well choreographed. I really liked the scene where there was kind of this father-son arc. This father felt like his son wasn't ready to fight, but the son was ready. And then in the middle of the battle, he looks around and his son's there fighting. He just like kind of looks at him like, what the fuck are you doing here? I told and you to wait fighting in the car. Together. Yeah, exactly. I thought it was really well done. I, I thought like, that was a great moment. So. And it's a nice reverse from the first movie. Yeah, yeah. exactly, where they had the father-son thing going on there too. So it, they do a lot of that, which I thought... I think it's really a great trick with writing. And then when the dad died, it was like, it was a little sad. Yeah. yeah. It was like, oh, I'm glad he didn't just get like some quick death. Like, yeah. they let him have his moment to give a little speech to his son. That's true. <laughs> and I, I like the camera work too. I like the scene where it's like following the arrow. I thought that was an awesome scene. Yeah. I really enjoyed that, you know? What well, I like those are the remnants of the original <laughs> movie style before they, you know, because this movie sort of combines the action style of the first one and then mixes in its own visual look. What I liked about the action too was that the camera lets the action scenes play out. As yeah. In the first one, it's very just super stylistic with the camera the whole time. And this one, it's just war. A lot of time, war is just going to the battlefield just shh the whole time. Yeah. And it was like watching just fight scenes really play out. And uh, man, I just wish Eva Green didn't die. Like, I thought the dynamics between uh, Demos Colosiosis and uh, Eva Green was just really good. And yeah, it's I you know, was... wish she could make it into the next one. but Somehow. And his performance is, is that much better when they are together. Yes. You know? Yeah, they play, they have great chemistry. Yeah, yeah. he finally has some charm when he's around her, you know? Yeah. So, what do you guys think are some reasons to see it after talking about it? Well, there's a lot of eye candy, you know? There's some really great looking shirtless guys. Yeah. 
It's not quite candy. the first movie, but you definitely get the ad. This is for you if you're the not into the ads. super ripped look, but yeah. you still want people who are cut. Like, yeah, 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 that's yeah. your movie. Eva Green would probably is another reason for sure. Oh. Eva Green. Lena Hetty. Lena Hetty, another reason. Some of the cinematography is just awesome too. Cin cinematography is yeah. great. Visual effects is still dynamite. Awesome fight scenes. Mm -hmm. Watching it in IMAX, another mm -hmm. great reason to watch Very it. Very true. I guess the most glorious is, is would be good too. All right, guys, thanks for checking out our review for 300 Rise of an Empire. Why don't you go ahead, scroll that comment box below, and tell me what is your favorite sex scene you've seen in a movie. And once you're done with that, and before I have an allergy attack, click this button, this button, so... There. So you can check out more episodes of Reasons to See. And last <laughs> but not least, if you want to get updated every time one of our videos or reviews or whatever awesome thing we have is out, subscribe! subscribe. Click on Cat's head. Right here. Right there. Click it. Were you giving the middle finger? No, he's pointing. Oh, you're pointing. I thought you were flicking off you our subscribers. I wouldn't head. do that, no. No, please don't wouldn't. flick off our subscribers. I wouldn't. Please, Cat. It's not nice. Uh, I love our subscribers. I love our subscribers, too. Cat put me in the friend zone. I can't believe this shit. <laughs> oh, yeah, I did. I declared him friend she zone. She declared it. You know, I've had a few people say, I just see you as a friend. But rarely does someone say to me, you're in the friend zone. It was straight up bluntness, and my heart just... It's true. <laughs> Do you know what this is? We were on the phone for That's uh, the smallest violin. The world's smallest violin. Yeah. It's playing a very sad song right now, just for you, <laughs> oh, Ryan. Thank you. Was you know Jerry what this in the is? What? The world's smallest accordion. <laughs> oh. I'm playing the gypsy version of, of this song. You know what this is? What? Jerry masturbating. <laughs> well done. Well done. Because you're implying that my penis is really, really <laughs> he got a small penis. The small penis. <laughs> That's yeah, the cool. joke. That's yeah. the joke. He's got a small penis. He's got a small penis. This is this is Ryan masturbating. Then, I, what do I do? There's there's nothing. Don't make fun of my vagina.